Hello, dear students of Primary 3 in St. Joseph's International School. Today we continue explaining the science curriculum for the first term. And today we begin theme 2. To remind you quickly, in theme 1 we have studied how to maintain a healthy body, how to have a good character, how to have a, a good character, some good skills, how to eat proper, properly so that you can have a healthy body. Good. And the last thing we talked about in the last video was how important water is. And water, we said that it can help you with headaches, it can help you keep you healthy, keep you hydrated. It can also help you uh, regulate your sleep, something to do with your bones, your joints, their movements. So it's a very important thing that we need. And we need to drink at least one and a half or two liters every day. Good. But how do we get water? Well, water has always been on Earth. And Earth is one of the very few, very, very few planets in the whole universe that has water in three different states. What do we mean by that? that we have solid water, which is ice, like this. We have liquid water, like this, like the one we drink. And we have gaseous water, like the very small water particles in the air. The most important one is something called liquid water, which is the one we drink. Liquid water can be found in rivers, groundwater, and lakes. These are examples of fresh water that we can drink. Liquid water can also exist in the sea and the oceans, which are salty water. Salty meaning that the water is not to be drank. We don't drink this water because it has salt in it. Good. So, after a while being exposed to the sun, the water in any water body becomes heated. So it becomes hotter. And the heat does to the water a very important thing which is called Evaporation. Evaporation is when liquid water starts to become gaseous water. So we, it becomes something called steam. S-T-A-A-M. Steam. Or water vapor. So the steam goes up into the air like this. And when the water goes up into the air, a very important thing becomes to develop, which is the clouds. So the clouds we see in the sky, especially in the winter, are the clouds in the sky, are the water that was at one time liquid on earth. But water doesn't go up infinitely. It doesn't keep going up and up and up. Water in the sky, the clouds in the sky, gather together. They meet each other. So, so they become more and more, more and more of them. And this is condensation. Condensation is... When the water vapor or the steam, which is the gas, the gaseous water, 
changes one more time into liquid water. So, the water changes from liquid to gas through evaporation. And one more time from gas to liquid through condensation. Very good. What happens after too many clouds have met each other? They become heavy. And when they become heavy, they can't stay in the sky for so long. So, one of two things happen. Something called precipitation. Precipitation means that the water in the clouds becomes too heavy to stay in the sky, so it falls down. And usually when it falls down, it falls on a mountain. Or it can go through something called vapor transport. Vapor transport is when the cloud changes from water to ice or to snow. And this snow is solid as we know. And then it's too heavy to stay in the sky and precipitation happens. But in this case, it's rain. And in this case, it's no. So, in both cases, a very important thing called precipitation, which is the falling down of the liquid or the solid in the sky to the ground one more time. And usually, as I said, it falls down on a mountain. Well, something on a mountain falling down it will have to go back to earth. And this is what we call runoff. So runoff is when the water that fell on the mountain starts to flow back to the original body of water one more time. So we can see here that this is a cycle, yes. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation, runoff, and it collected one more time. And if it doesn't fall back to the lake or the sea, it falls on the ground and it creates groundwater, which is then connected one more time, so it goes back to the original body one more time. Good. So this is what we call the water cycle. We have a body of water, the water evaporates because of the sun, and then it condenses, goes to, through condensation because it gets too heavy, and when it gets too, too heavy, it precipitates, it falls down, and then it goes through runoff, and then it goes back to the water body one more time. So this is the water cycle. So now, what we need to do is, we want to fill, to fill in the gaps using these words. Okay, so, this is a body of water, what's happening here? You can see the water is going up to the sky, so is it evaporation, condensation, groundwater, precipitation, or runoff? Which one is it? I'll give you a chance. And the answer is evaporation. So here, we choose evaporation. Good. <clears throat> okay. Here, what's happening? <coughs> the water is up in the sky now and it becomes collected together as many, many clouds. What do we call this? Condensation, groundwater, precipitation, or runoff. Which one is it? Well, this is condensation. Good.
Now the water is falling or the snow is falling. So is it groundwater? Is it precipitation or runoff? Well, this is precipitation. Good. And in this case, is it groundwater or runoff? It's falling from the mountain back to the body of water. So this is runoff. Excellent. And finally, this is the water in the ground. So we call it, yes, groundwater. So this is mainly everything about science in the first term. So we talked about how to keep a healthy character, a healthy lifestyle, how to keep a healthy body, and how to stay healthy through eating right, the right food. And one very important thing that we have to keep into our body is water. And now we know something very, very important, which is the water cycle, which tells us how water is created. I hope that you have enjoyed this videos and as usual if you have any questions you can always ask and best of luck and see you next time inshallah bye bye